Welcome everybody to Metal Talk. This is one more episode. We're starting off uh, 2021 the right way with an incredible interview, one that we were waiting for. He's a Swedish uh, singer, <laughs> producer. He's incredible. His name is Mats Levin. What's up, Mats? Welcome hey, to Metal thank Talk. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm proud to be the first one in 2021. All right. Oh, it's a good year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should be, Mats. Uh, we know you from great work uh, with uh, Ingve Malmsteen, with Crooks, with uh, Advance, Therion, Candle Mass. Uh, you toured with Firewind. You toured with the Trans Siberian Orchestra. And uh, now you're working with your solo project, Skyblood, which uh, yeah. I've, been, uh, I've been listening to. It's fantastic. You released it in 2019. Uh, Mats, how's everything going for you in this year? How is COVID treating you? What are you currently up to, Mats? Uh, well, the first thing, currently I'm working my ass off with a, an album with a Swedish band called Le Prince Svart. That's like Prince Black in English. Uh, I so I joined those guys earlier uh, last year and uh, they're old friends of mine and I kind of helped them out before doing some shows, but now I'm like a member of the band and We've been writing a lot of material the last few uh, months to complete the album. So uh, we are finishing the recording right now as we speak, actually. That's what wow. I'm working with every day now. So we leave the, mm. the last songs for a mix in a week or so. And uh, we're going to release it in April, hopefully. And it's a big album. It's, it's going to be fantastic and massive. And I think people even, because we sing in Swedish. And it's the first time, right. I, re the first time I release uh, an album in Swedish. And... Uh, we have like one or two songs up on Spotify where you can hear it, uh, hear the first mm -hmm. tracks. But it's uh, lots of fun. It's great. I mean, it's like after 30 years in the business, I finally get to sing in Swedish, which is super cool. <laughs> that, that's, that's, um, that's what I'm doing right now. Last year with uh, the pandemic and everything, I've been, I've been kind of fortunate anyway, because mm -hmm. I'm pretty, I'm pretty used to live like this. You know, I, Sometimes I don't make money. Sometimes I make money. Sometimes I tour. Sometimes I just work in the studio all the time. And I, you know, we got a family as well. So this year has been a lot about my wife. She's more like in the movie TV business. And she's been able to actually do quite some work. So she could say yes to everything. And I could more take care of the kids and work in my studio with the recordings and stuff. So, um, you know, and here in Sweden, you, you get some money from the government to, to kind of cover for, for the losses you had. And so, I mean, right. there, there, are, there are so many people who are way worse off than, than me. So I should, I'm, I'm not complaining, you know, because I didn't have any big tours or anything planned this year mm -hmm. in 2020 anyway. So, so I've, been, I've been very, very creative, writing a lot, recording a lot in my studio. And uh, so, yeah, so I kept myself really busy anyway you know so uh yeah so, so i've been kind of fortunate anyway but who knows i mean 2021 wow. 2021 will also be a tough year of course because yeah. now now everybody wants to release new albums and everybody they want to mm -hmm. go out and tour after the summer if possible and uh, so it's a uh, it's a uh, another kind of tough year i guess you know yeah but, uh, yeah that's the way it is that's the way it is but that's the good thing with uh, this swedish band is that we actually, this summer, we did like 10 shows for only 50 mm. people, for 50 people, because you could play for a maximum of 50 people in Sweden. This was in oh, Sweden? And, yeah, and we can do that. We can, wow. you know, because, because we are a very organic band. I mean, the way we, you know, we can just put our stuff up in the garden and play and it sounds great, you know, we're that kind of band. So we just decided, to, yeah, let's do that. We want to play live. Uh, we don't make that much money, but you know, people paid a bit more for the ticket and uh, it was worth it for us to travel around Sweden and do shows. And we had a great time doing it. And, uh, you know, so we kind of, we kind of pretended like the pandemic wasn't there, you know, even though we just played for 50 people, which was cool. I, th I think it's pretty fortunate, Matt, that, that you're saying that because there's a lot of musicians out there that wish that they, they could at least do something with their music. So yeah. to hear that you're on your feet and to hear that you continue uh, making music is, is just fantastic. I, I actually, I, I don't think I can pronounce the name of the band, but I definitely did hear some, uh, some music, some songs out there. It's more of a hard rock uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, it's more of a hard rock, classic rock, correct? Well, yeah. how would you describe it? 
correct? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, the foundation right. of uh, Prince Svart is the first few albums they did with another singer were pretty much 70s basic hard rock, you know, mm -hmm. a, a bit of Deep Purple and blah, blah, blah. But then right. the cool thing and the reason I joined is that they are very open-minded and they are not afraid of changing the style or trying trying out new stuff. So that's what's happening on this album. It's going to sound sometimes quite different to what Prince Svart sounded like before because mm. uh, they're not afraid of doing new stuff. And I like that. I like that. Right, so, of course. So, so, it's, uh, so it's going to be... Uh, I mean, we release a new track now on Friday uh, on Spotify, mm. which uh, is really cool, a bit slower, but really, really good. And then the third track we're going to release in um, February, March. It's going to surprise people. It sounds totally different. So it's, uh, that's why I really enjoy playing with Prince Svart. Really great musicians and very, very open-minded. There's no problem. That's... There are no rules. You know, that's great. Because you know, you know how it is normally, normally in hard rock and heavy metal, you know, every, mm -hmm. band, every band kind of have, you know, they have their style, they have their audience. They don't want to, they want to stick to their guns, so to speak. They don't want to disappoint right. the listener which is great, but, but with Prince Vart, it's like, I think as a band, we are still looking for what, ident I don't know what identity we have. We don't really care that much, you know. We just enjoy <laughs> playing music and, and if something sounds like a death metal track or something sounds like a soft ballad, it, it doesn't matter. As long as it's good, we just do it. So be it, you're still, you're still enjoying the freedom of metal, the freedom of rock. You're yeah. still enjoying that, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Hey, Matt, talk, talk to us about your solo project. And by the way, uh, we will definitely be promoting this single coming, up, uh, coming out on Friday. Uh, we're going to share it in our socials at Metal Talk cool, uh, Podcast on Facebook and Instagram, of course. Stay tuned cool. to Metal Talk News as well on our YouTube. Uh, but uh, talk to us about Sky Blood. Listen to the, listen to the album. Uh, it was released back in 2019. Uh, it's very... Very, very good album, in my opinion. Again, I think it was taking Thanks. more. Uh, it describes, they describe your album as who Matt Slevin truly is, which is, a, you know, a variety of styles, but at the same time, focusing on that incredible power of your voice. Uh, talk to us about this album. Did you enjoy making it? What's next in the horizon for Sky Blood? Well, I mean, uh, a lot of those songs were really old songs. I had, I had a lot mm. of songs that I... I just felt they did, they never, those songs never fit any band that I played with. If I had the opportunity to write material with different bands, uh, I just saved those ideas for myself, you know? And, uh, and it's, it's almost been like a joke among my friends that, I, you know, will, will Matt's ever release his album? Because I've been talking about this album for 20 years almost, you know, back and forth. <laughs> so, so, um, so some songs are like 20 years old and some songs I wrote in 2019. Uh, but, um, so it's been a kind of a long process, but I was lucky actually the day, a day or two after the split with Canamass in 2018, I made some Facebook post about work. That was also a thing when I was in Candlemass, I didn't really want to mess with Candlemass. I didn't want to release like a solo album that sounded so different to Candlemass because when right. you play with, when you play with Candlemass, I kind of felt hey, I got an obligation to be a band member, to be true to the fans and, you know, you know, just be a kind of mass singer. That's it, you know. But as soon as we split, I put this post up about writing my solo material and uh, Sebastian at Napalm happened to see it and he was like contacting me because Canamass were already on Napalm. So he contacted me, hey man, do you have any demos you can send? And I had like tons of demos to send him because I... I'm very, you know, I do my own demos with, uh, with v, v drums and I record everything myself, you know. So I could send stuff to him in 30 minutes. And then like an hour later, I kind of had the contract because he really liked what he heard, wow. you know. So I was lucky. I was fortunate. And um, so then I, then I got really inspired, of course, that suddenly I had like a, a goal, like a really had a contract. So, um, so that, that was awesome. And uh, so my whole idea with Skyblood was to... Uh, uh, after the release, I was starting to try to book shows and festivals in 2020. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of, but it, I kind of noticed that for every year it gets harder. You got to book so much in advance. And since this was a new thing, they didn't really know what it was. And, you know, so when the pandemic hit, I was like, I was kind of lucky in that sense because I didn't have that right. many Skype blood shows anyway. 
because I had already decided that, hey, I might as well do a second album before people even know what this is and I have all the reviews and blah, 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 you know, and then I can do like, because I have some kind of specific ideas about the show and as well, because it's not like a right. normal, normal show. So, but of course now it's even harder because I mean, it's going to be so hard to find good festival slots in 2020, 22 as well, because everybody, right. All the big bands are out all the time. So, but anyway, it's it going to give you more time for planning at least, Matt, at least well, it's going well, to give you more time for planning or a second album at least. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I recorded basic tracks for four songs for the next album already. Wow. So, so I got like four songs that are, uh, you know, where, uh, all the drums are recorded and I got the foundation of the songs actually. Mm -hmm. But now I've been, I've been so busy with other stuff this year. So I just did sky blood when I had like a couple of days uh, free, you know, and I was inspired. So I, you know, and to be honest, I'm not sure uh, when Napalm, if Napalm want to release the next album, because you know, all those big record companies, they got so much material to release now because Everyone has been recording new albums, you know. So, so I'm I'm not, I'm not ex expecting to release the album too soon, anyway. You know, right? I guess what we could what we can do as as fans of uh, of Matt Slevin and of your music is uh, definitely support the album, support the Skyblood album, which you can find it on Spotify and yeah, where yeah. else can you find it, Matt? You can well, find you can definitely buy you can buy the album, which is the best way to do, correct? Yeah, I mean you can buy the album through Napalm Records and their website, right. and I've got. Um, I've got vinyls and CDs that I actually bought from Napalm as well, so I can sell through my um, through my merch shop. And uh, you know, I got T-shirts and some other stuff as well that I printed myself that Napalm let me print myself. So I got some I got some Skyblood stuff on my um, on my big cartel uh, shop merch site. We can find that on your website, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't even remember. It's like a big cartel address now, but you know. Uh, if you go to my Facebook or my Instagram, on my Instagram, you have the link in the bio to, um, to the merch shop and everything. So Perfect. We'll, so we'll definitely no link these. We'll link those in the description of the video so everybody yeah, can visit great. your website as well. And we cool, can man. get your merchandise because you definitely want to support music like this so that we, you can guys continue to release albums and, and continue to release the music that we love to hear. So, uh, Matt, let's go back a little bit in time. Let's go back to the beginning of your career. Uh, obviously, you have fans among different genres, well, not diff necessarily genres, but bands and uh, different areas of metal. Uh, yeah. You know, you begin your, your career back in the late 80s uh, and then uh, managed to actually work with one of the greats, with one of the big names, which is Yngwie Malmsteen. Uh, you, yeah. you record Facing the Animal with him. And then a few years later, uh, you actually got to be part of one of the most iconic, which is Double Live, you know, one of the most iconic uh, live albums of his. Uh, how was it to work with Ingve, do you remember? Do you have some cherished memories of uh, working with him? And um, you know, uh, how was your relationship with him nowadays? If there's still one? Well, nowadays, I I, I don't think I've met Ingve for probably ten years or something. I remember I met him right 2008 at the NAM convention in uh, Anaheim, in the states. I don't think I met him after that. Uh, but I mean, I don't, there are not too many people that meet him, you know, of his old friends. Anyway. Right. I mean, you know, he's got his family and he lives in Miami and, you know, so, but uh, I mean, but the whole experience of playing with him was, was great. It was like a big, uh, for me, it was a big thing. It was my first world tour and uh, it was great coming to Miami. It was great to record with Cosi Powell on drums. And, you know, it was like a really big thing for me. It was fantastic. So, um, so I'm really grateful for that chance I got to do that. And, uh, you know, that kind of started my career, I guess, uh, in a more professional way after that. Mm -hmm. it, you can, you, I mean, you can say like in 97, that's when I really became like a professional um, full-time musician, you know. Would you say it was uh, your golden times of your career, Mats? What do you... Do you, do you say, well, some of the best times or is it where you're really just fresh and young trying to absorb everything? How did you feel at those times? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of, it, uh, I mean, obviously it was awesome to play, uh, especially in Japan and South America, really big stages right. for a lot of people. Coming to Japan mm -hmm. for the first time was awesome. And, uh, and the other guys in the band were great as well, really, you know, really, really nice guys and great musicians. So that whole experience was, 
was fantastic. That I guess that that's what you aim for when you when you're a kid and you start playing and you rehearse and you know to go on a world tour and blah blah blah. You know the whole thing. So uh, yeah, so that was awesome and. Uh, and the whole recording process, uh, working with Chris Tangridis, who's not with us anymore, the producer. And uh, right. yeah, so it was great. I mean, I mean, of course, there were like, there were like, um, you know, there were some problems along the way as well. We had I had to walk around, wait a long time in Sweden before, before we got out on tour because there was like a financial crisis in Southeast Asia wow. in '97. So the album got postponed for six months. So I was kind of just walking around in Sweden, waiting to get the call to actually go out and tour and promote the album. Uh, so um, that was a bit of a drag. But uh, yeah, so that was the start of my career, I guess. And um, mm-hmm. and I actually had had a pretty good relationship with him when we when we uh, worked together as well, because he, I think he was kind of happy to get like a Swedish singer back in the band of again. Course. He felt like you know. And, uh, you know, and we, we wrote those songs pretty fast as well, man. It's, you know, sometimes he had like a title for a song, cool. Then I wrote a lyric about, you know, about that title. Sometimes I had the, sometimes I had the melodies and, you know, and I came up with something and uh, he was like super cool with that. It was like, yeah, I love this. This is great, awesome. There was, there was no f- real fight about that, you know. So it was, right. we worked really fast and, you know, I had my hotel and stuff. So I had like a rental car. I went to his studio daytime. We sat down and worked and wrote and demoed stuff. And then I went home, you know, continued writing lyrics and working on the songs and it was kind of professional, you know, you know, of course. It, it was great. It was great. So, um, so yeah, so we, um, we wrote those songs pretty fast and uh, recorded them in, Early 1997 in Miami. 97, so, that's correct. Yeah, early 97, but it, it took like almost a year before the album was released because uh, Ing- for Ingrid, it was really important with Japan, you know. Uh, of he's course. Got to, he's got to synchronize everything with Japan and they really wanted to wait for, for six months because it was a financial crisis. He's got a big following over there and to hear you on that uh, double live album is just, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess I became an Ingve Momsen after uh, I'm, I'm an Ingve Momsen fan, uh, you know, yeah. uh, much later. And then I listened to you as, an, as a singer and I was like, wow, I, I couldn't believe that Matt Slevin was there too. So it was fantastic. And you sound great as well. And, uh, you know, we continue down the path of your career, Matt. And, uh, you know, you uh, work with other bands such as Southpaw. You were with Crux. And then Advance, which is one of my personal favorites too. Uh, you work oh, cool. with Oliver Hartman. Yeah, yeah. With his great, great, great band. Um, and then you step into one of the most significant roles, I believe, um, in, your, in your career, and definitely one that marked uh, a great era, which was the band Therion. You join them, yeah. uh, you record, uh, I believe, uh, Le- Lemuria, Series B, Celebrators of the Becoming. Uh, you do Gothic Kabbalah, and then you also do Live Gothic. Yeah. Um, I, I believe there's uh, the Miskolk experience, uh, yeah. Is also there, which you sang yeah. on as well. Um, you were a fantastic addition. I think the first time I saw you was on the Celebrators of the Coming DVD, actually, as a l- singing live. Um, yeah. You brought a lot of power to the songs. Um, it was amazing to see. I'm originally from Mexico, and it was amazing to see mm-hmm. how my my compatriots were, were supported you so much and loved Therion so much. So um, how do you feel about the Therion times? I know it was a strange departure on your part, Matt. Uh, to be honest, honest with you, we were a bit confused because yeah, yeah. you've led such an important role in Gothic Kabbalah. I believe the single Son, Sons of the States of Time uh, yes. was part of, uh, you were co-composer of that song, if not main I composer. Wrote, you I wrote, wrote the whole song. I wrote the whole song. Yeah. You wrote the whole song and it was a single to the album. It, there was yeah. a video to the song. So, what happened? What happened between you and Therion? We're very, very interested to know. Um, when I left, you mean? Yeah, correct. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. When, when, no, when you the left, thing, yeah. Well, I mean, first, first, uh, I like to say that Gothic Cabla was an awesome album. I really, really enjoyed that album. We worked so hard on that. Definitely. And, and Christopher was really cool as well because he let all of us contribute writing material, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, we were like six songwriters on that album. It was Snowy, it was 
Peter, the drummer, it was the mm -hmm. Neiman brothers, Christopher, Correct. of course, and myself. So I think uh, I was like part of five or six songs on that album. So it was awesome. It was great. And uh, then we did the, the tour. And um, after a while, I kind of felt that on that tour, uh, we had like four lead singers. It was Snowy, myself, uh, Katarina and Lori, and, uh, Lori. Which, was, which was awesome. I mean, it, it was, the whole setup was awesome. I loved the stage show. You know, it was great. Four great singers. Everything was cool, but it was kind of weird for me because after two hour show, maybe I had sung four songs, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time I've been standing in the back doing backing vocals, playing some guitar, and which was cool for the show. It was awesome. It was great, you know, but I kind of felt after a while, the first tour I did with Therion when I came in was, it made much more sense to me because I came in, I was the main singer, uh, I did what I usually do. That's that's what Correct. I enjoy. I enjoy being on stage, playing and singing. Now, what we did with the Gothic Cavalier tour was a bit more like a musical almost, you know. Uh, you're just a part of it. And that, that was great in one sense. But on the other hand, I kind of felt like it wasn't really that fun anymore. I, I really didn't enjoy myself to go around touring that much uh, if I was going to not sing more than I actually did, you know, I kind of felt like right. this is what is, this is not why I do what I do, you know. Uh, so I think it was actually uh, in April or something that year. I don't remember. It was April in 2007, I think, that, hmm. that, that uh, we decided that didn't really make sense. And then I did some more shows, so they had some time to find a new singer after me. So I kind of stayed. So I did my last show at Hellfest, I think, that week in Grass Pop and uh, Hellfest was the last shows I did. And during that time, they had time to find Thomas, who was a friend of mine, uh, Correct. who kind of took my spot, which is a great guy, by the way, fantastic singer. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how it happened. So I did like a total of 150 shows or something with Therion. And uh, it was really fun because uh, I did one show with Therion last year, or if it was 2018, 2018 in okay. Poland. I stepped in because Thomas couldn't do the show and they had like a festival in Poland. So Christopher asked me if I wanted to do uh, just that show, you know, and they would kind of change the set list. So it would be a lot of songs that I already had sung before. And uh, so of course it had been like 10 years. So I had kind of learned all the lyrics again, but I, because I, I kind of remembered that, wow, this was fun. I really enjoyed this. This was great, you know, uh, a lot of great songs. So it was cool to kind of uh, dig into that and learn those lyrics again. And uh, it was great to be, be on stage with them again, doing that, you know? So, so that, that, that was really, that was fun. That was fun. And I'm actually doing a song on the new album as well that they released now. Oh, but you are, uh, Leviathan. You're participating yeah. on it. Yeah, it's just like, I guess, I, I don't sing that much. It's just one song. I sing some parts, you know. So I haven't, oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually heard the song yet. Uh, I just heard the parts that I did, so. It's very, very exciting to hear something like that because we knew that Snowy Shaw was going to be playing some drums for some upcoming songs in the album. As a matter of fact, he, uh, we had an interview with him uh, not too long ago here at Metal Talk, and, and he expressed a very similar sentiment as, as you are, uh, Matt, as far as uh, what happened to the, uh, the, the production of Therion, that it grew into, uh, like you said, it added more theatrics, it added more elements. Uh, you know, there was, uh, uh, the outfits were different as well. Uh, yeah. And I think, uh, as you said, um, I think it matched uh, the, the great quality of Gothic Kabbalah. I think it's definitely in my top three albums of all time. And I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I think it's fantastic. Oh. Uh, uh, Theme-wise, song-wise, structure-wise, uh, yeah. I think you're a great songwriter. Petter is a great songwriter as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Petter is uh, awesome. He's awesome. So I think it was a lot of uh, incredible additions that came to the band when Gothic Kabbalah was released, and then we saw it live. And then, unfortunately, I think that there was a, a great 
I, I don't want to say decline out of respect, but there was a big change in the, in the yeah. lineup or the band. You know what I mean? So uh, it, sure. it's fantastic at least to hear that you are coming back, you are collaborating with Therion, at least if it's like one song, yeah, but yeah. it's great to, yeah, it's great to hear that you are around. Um, let me ask you something now that you mentioned Leviathan and now that you're outside of Therion, how do you feel about, or have you listened to their music after the Gothic Kabbalah era? And how do you feel yeah. about Vikstrom and the rest of the guys? Well, I mean, I know all the guys because, I mean, they're old friends of mine. And I actually mm -hmm. played, I mean, Thomas I've known for many years. I mean, we, the first time we met was when I was in my first band in 89. We did shows oh, wow. together he, in his band called Talk of the Town and, you know, with my band. So, so we met like in 89 the first time. And we did like backing vocals for Lion Share together, him and me, Lion, mm -hmm. the first two, three albums for Lion Share. And we did a tour in Spain as well, playing Queen songs with Symphonic Orchestra we did together. Oh. So we've wow. done a lot of stuff together. And Christian Vidal, the guitar player from Therion, he uh, played guitar mm -hmm. on that Queen uh, uh, thing as well. So I knew him and I, I've known Nalle, the bass drummer for many, many years. He plays on my Sky Blood album, plays bass. And, you know, I've I known all those guys for many years. So I've, I've kind of listened to, to a song here and there. I was kind of curious. It's always fun to hear what they're doing. And, um, and I actually did, on this show we did in, in Poland, I did the, that Antichrist song, the first track on the, mm -hmm. the Antichrist. Oh, beloved Antichrist, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I did that song. Uh, so I heard a little of that as well. And I mean... Of course, I mean, since the Neiman brothers left as well, after I left, the Neiman brothers left and Petra left and, you know, they were all uh, very vital to that era of Therian and the sound. Right. And uh, so, and of course, you got to understand that Christopher, he always wants to kind of try out new stuff and he's like, he's not afraid to. Okay, so the stuff they released after... I guess after 2010 or something started to kind of be a bit different or whatever, but change still, a little bit. Yeah. And I think yeah. if I, if I understood things right with this new album, they are probably trying to kind of go back a little to the old days again. Uh, but I don't, I haven't heard the album. I only heard one single and that sounded cool. So um, yeah. So, and yeah, so it's, it's, I'm sure it's, I think, I remember when we did Gothic Kabbalah because there were a lot of fans. They didn't like Gothic Kabbalah uh, because it was different. It sounded different. Uh, but I kind of knew all the time that, well, in 10 years, people will understand that this is a really good album. This is a uh, really quality. Absolutely, Matt. Absolutely. It's aged so well. Uh, honestly, I, I continue listening to it to this day. I think it's one of those albums that you listen to first track all the way to the end. There's no <laughs> bad song. I don't think there's filler. Um, I really no. don't think there's filler in, in, in that album. I think it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So if you haven't listened to it, de definitely do so. And Leviathan's coming up, that new album from Therion. I'm so happy that Matt Slevin's going to be participating on it. Snowy Shaw is going to be on it. Uh, Marco Heitala is going to be on it. So let's hope they come back to their roots. And uh, God knows, at some point, probably Matt Slevin comes back and fronts that band once again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Just to Who wrap knows? up the Therion talk, um, I, I have this question for you. Um, yeah. It's more of a, you know, uh, it's more of a, uh, you know, close range question. And I apologize if it's so close, but you no mentioned problem. that, uh, Petter, you mentioned that the Neiman brothers, which, oh, man, I love the Neiman brothers, yourself, Snowy, yeah. whatever. You mentioned that they all left. Did yeah. everyone leave or were they let go, Matt? No, I think they left all of them. Uh, Got it. Because, okay. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there, there were some reasons behind why I left as well, you know, mm -hmm. different things that, and I think part of those, those problems probably made the Neiman brothers and Petter leave in the end as well, you know, um, but, uh, you know, that's more like, that's not stuff I want to go talk about in the open, but, uh, you know, absolutely. When I, when I, Therion is, the, is, a, is a very like, uh, like a two-edged sword, so to speak. In, in one sense, it's, it's really, really cool and great 
because Christopher is very open-minded sometimes to let people influence and do their thing and everything. But of course, there was some other stuff that didn't work that well when it came to touring or uh, different stuff, you know. Uh, so, um, and I mean, both the Nima brothers, they had been in the band way longer than I had. I mean, they had right. been there probably for like 10 years almost before they left, I guess. So, so I guess they had their reasons as well. And um, I guess Petter as well felt that maybe if they left, it was pretty easy for him to leave as well because we, we were pretty, you know, close and good friends and everything. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, can, I can't speak for them. But I mean, uh, as far as I know, everybody actually left um, by their own accord, so to speak. Understood. Understood, Matt. Uh, that's a question that a lot of, uh, a lot of fans, uh, myself included, have asked ourselves because we wondered whether, uh, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a broken lineup that, what, that happened or it was just an end of an era. And I believe, like you're yeah. saying correctly, it's, it's an end of an era. You know, uh, uh, yeah. it happened so that hey, we created this masterpiece. I think it's, my, it's time to look uh, yeah. for uh, other opportunities within our careers. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and also, also I got to say as well that, what sometimes, I mean, some people know, but some people don't know that actually a band like Therion is, of course, more of a, it's Christopher's band, you know, it's Christopher's, yeah. uh, it's, it's Christopher's thing, which is uh, totally mm -hmm. cool. I mean, I was actually never, I was actually never a member of the band. Uh, I was asked to be a member of the band, but uh, I declined to be a member of the band. I said, I'd rather be, I'd rather be freelance freelance singer with a band uh, and uh, it didn't make much sense for me to kind of go out and say that I was like a full member because uh, uh, well it didn't make any sense really when it came to any uh, it would just it would if I had been a proper member of the band it would would just have meant that I would have to do much more things that I didn't want to do as a member mm -hmm. to take part of and uh so it was easy you know and also it, it was just it was easy for me to kind of leave since i was not a member as well because i wasn't sure i kind of knew from the start this is not a band you know if, if it if it had been like more of a band then i would like to be a member of course but uh it's not that situation with terry which is cool i mean it's, it's christopher's world it's his uh it's his vision so that's cool. I mean, he's the boss. No problem. Yeah, constant cha uh, lineup changes and uh, maybe constant exploration of different uh, types of music and styles and all that. Totally understood. Uh, thank you, Matt, for giving us that explanation. I think that's something that we all wanted to know. So yeah. it's very enlightening for, for, for you to share that with us. Let's, we continue down the path of your career. And, uh, you know, some, sometime a bit later, you, I pick you up on uh, Gus G's uh, solo album. Mm. You record some songs with him. Oh, man. I had missed, I had missed, uh, you know, getting those uh, uh, Matt Slevin vocals and that voice. And I think you do some inc an incredible uh, a job with uh, eyes, uh, 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 eyes Wide Open. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great, that's a great, great song. Uh, yeah. uh, it's, I believe it's uh, in the, at the end of the line. End of the mm. line is a fantastic song that I love too. Uh, cool. You know, some real good stuff that you did with him. Uh, how was it to work with Gus G? Well, I met Gus... Um probably around 2006 or seven or something. He was in Sweden recording a Five Wind album. And uh, at that time he had Mark Cross on drums. And, right. I, had, and I had done shows with Mark with Advance. After, when we released the second Advance album, he was the live drummer. And so I got to know Mark then. So Mark contacted me when they were playing with Five Wind, recording with Five Wind. And um, so that's when I met Gus the first time, I think. And then every now and then I was contacted by Gus. He, he, he needed some uh, live vocals because Apollo couldn't do a tour or something. Right. Uh, and uh, I remember they asked, asked me about a U.S. tour that I couldn't do. But then they asked me again about a European tour that I did in 2011, I think. Uh, so we did a European tour. Uh, with Firewind, which was great. And then like in 2012, I think he started talking about uh, maybe do a solo album. And uh, 
spoke to me a little about that and his ideas, uh, you know. So that's where that started. And, um, and Gus is a brilliant guy. He's uh, such a brilliant guitar player, but he's also very, he's a very down to earth guy, very nice, mm -hmm. nice person. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's that kind, he doesn't, he, you know, he doesn't fuck up, you know. He's, he knows exactly. No, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly yeah. what he's doing. He's very professional. He will be there on time, no problem. You know, so I enjoy I enjoy working with him a lot. And uh, so the way we did it was that he started to send me like riffs, guitar riffs or whatever, and I would come back to him and say, Hey, maybe we can do this kind of melody on this, or maybe we can use this as a verse instead. And I got this thing. What do you think? And so it was pretty easy. Uh, to start writing songs together. So on that first album, uh, I think we co-wrote five songs on the first album. I sing on four, and then uh, Michael Starr sings Redemption. Uh, Michael from uh, Steve Panther. And mm -hmm. uh, so we did five songs on that one, and then on the second album, we co-wrote three songs on Brand New Revolution. Wow. So we did like eight songs. And the, the cool thing was that I really think we uh, found a good chemistry when it came to write like classic, good classic rock songs, but with a bit of a metal edge to it as well, you know, which was really cool. I really liked that. Uh, on the other hand, I know that Gus, he was kind of just trying out, if I'm going to be a solo artist, what should I do? Should I play mm -hmm. instrument? Should I play instrumental stuff? Should I write metal stuff? Should I write classic rock stuff? So he kind of, tried it out a little with different singers for a couple of albums and so that's what we did and i did a tour as well we you know we did a couple of tours together with marty friedman and uh, which was awesome it was great you know it's uh, such a pleasure to to work with gus he's awesome i really love that those solo albums let me tell you uh like you say like you say correctly i think that you brought in it, it was you know it was very easy listening uh it was catchy it had yeah. great guitars great tunes uh very good choruses, uh, you know, brought to obviously by you, which, uh, you know, especially when you're on your songs, obviously, uh, very, very catchy stuff, Matt. It's very, very, very good yeah. stuff. Uh, very good material with Gusty that you created. Um, cool. Let's fast forward on, on now, until the now. So 2018, I believe you were touring with Trans-Siberian Orchestra. You were uploading some photos recently. You look fantastic out there, man. Um, cool. Yeah, recent times. What what would you been working on besides? You know, you told us about Sky Blood. You told us about the upcoming single with your with your band. Uh, mm. What else is coming up, man? Well, uh, last year um, I completed the second album with a band called Opera Diabolicus. That's uh -huh. Snowy, Shaw, Snowy Shaw plays drums on that and sings as well. Uh, it's a Swedish band. We did a we did one album in two thousand fourteen. It's pretty like, uh, it sounds a bit, you know, it's like a bit King Diamond, Merciful Fate, uh, Candle Mass inspired. And the new album sounds incredible. It hasn't been released yet, but it sounds fantastic. And I actually sing more songs on this album than I did on the first one. I was more like a guest singer on the first one. But on right. this one, I, I sing seven or eight songs, I think, on the new one. And it, it's, uh, it's an awesome album. I really, really hope that... Uh, David gets a good label to release it because he puts so much work into it. It's ridiculous. So it's a great album. Uh, so that's kind of waiting to be released. Uh, I done another album with the guy from Finland, a uh, Finnish guitar player. Uh, that sounds awesome as well. It sounds totally, di totally different to anything I've ever done. Uh, Is I it a, like, a known, known no. Finnish guitars? No, no, no. And uh, it's kind of a semi secret thing we have but it's oh it's, it's uh, already recorded and uh it's uh it kind of sing, sounds like david bowie meets a ghost or something like that <laughs> oh wow kinda, so and it's awesome it's awesome i sing like david bowie yeah. kind of and he yeah he actually contacted me the day of the split with canamas when that came out on blabbermouth and everything uh -huh. i got like i got like a couple of mails that night from different you know bands or whatever but uh, he right. contacted he contacted me and I really got interested in his stuff. So, so that album is uh, finished as well. Uh, and then I'm writing a new album with. Um, uh, in 2012, there was a big movie. There was a big hit here in Sweden, 
calls uh, brothers, metal brothers or something, you know, it's, it's about two brothers. It's about two brothers who, who love metal. And so mm-hmm. I, I co-wrote all the music and, and sang and played some guitars on that album that was done for the movie. And uh, it's called, it's called Ludor, L-U-D-O-R. You can find it on Spotify, Ludor. And, Ludor, uh, we'll look for Ludor. that, definitely. Uh, uh, so I'm record- I started recording or writing and recording a new album right after the pandemic hit, like in April or something. Last year, I was like, I was talking to Jimmy, the guy that I co-wrote everything with, because Jimmy, mm-hmm. he, he writes for, for movies and TV music. Uh, but, he, but he's an awesome guitar player and uh, from from Gothenburg where I'm from, but he lives here in Stockholm as well. So we said, hey, let's write, let's write another Luder album just for fun now. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So, um, so I'm completing that in the next few months, probably. I've been working so hard now with Prince Svart, so I just had to wait with the Luder thing. But mm-hmm. I'm doing that. So that will be finished and I kind of release that myself probably in the summer through my website and stuff. That's where you can buy the album. I, I normally like print 300 vinyl, print vinyl and some CDs and, uh, you know, that's it. But it's, it's a cool, uh, it's kind of like a, a homage to the 80s metal kind of style. Of course. It's fun. It's yeah, cool. a lot it's of cool. fans. A lot of yeah, fans cool. still love vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's fun. So uh, I've done that and I've done some, uh, you know, I've done the occasional guest uh, stuff on different albums like the Therion thing and whatever. I don't, and I did, yeah, Royal Hunt, you know, that Danish band, Royal Hunt. Yeah, of course, Royal yeah. Hunt, yeah. Yeah, so I sing on the first uh, single with Royal Hunt because oh. they use different singers. They've done like a concept album, so they just released mm-hmm. the first single. Uh, so that one is out. It's called Art of Dying, that song. So I do vocals wow. on that one together with DC Cooper, the, the singer. So that is released. Uh, but I'm, I'm only doing that song. It's one song. And uh, I hardly remember everything I'm involved in. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> so many got, bands. Yeah. And then I got some other stuff that uh, I'm kind of can't say too much about. But, but basically, uh, basically, I've been um, writing a lot, especially this Prince Hot album is a big, long album, many songs. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be awesome. Uh, and then, of course, Sky Blood, I've been continuing working with that as well. So, and then before that, the years before that, I mean, I did Trans Siberian between 2016 to 2018 mm-hmm. for three years. Correct. And um, I maybe should, you know, if it hadn't been for the pandemic, maybe I should, would have done it again this year. I don't know because we never got that far in negotiations. But who knows? But Trans Siberian has been awesome, it's been great. And, um, but apart from that, you know, I've been, I've been doing like local shows in Sweden, like metal all stars thing with guys from Hammerfall. And, uh, right. you know, I always do backing vocals on the Hammerfall albums. The last three albums you did. I've done the backing vocals and, you know, so I kind of know those guys as well. We're friends. And, uh, and of course, before that, I've, I've been working a lot with Canamass between 2012 and 2018. There was a right. lot of Canamass, Canamass activity. So, uh, that's that's basically what I've been been doing, I guess. I, w- I was going to highlight your work with Hammerfall and the backing vocals that you've been doing for them, which is uh, it's great. Uh, but going back to what you just mentioned, Candlemas, um, is there anything besides what has been said, Matt? Anything w- besides what has been said regarding the breakup with Candlemas or the departure? Anything that you want to say on your behalf? Anything no. that you want to express to the fans? No, well, I mean, I, I think the, the whole situation with Canamas was pretty simple. I mm-hmm. was like, uh, I, was, I was really, really thrilled to be part of such a legendary band and actually be like a band member, uh, kind of, you know, because I haven't, I haven't played in that many real bands through the years, you know. I've, I've mostly been like a freelance singer coming in, doing this, doing that. And with Canamas, I really felt like, wow, we got potential to, because I always felt like Canamas had been, they should be more successful, if you know what I mean. Right. They, they had mm-hmm. such a career. They had so many great songs. And I was always wondering why, uh, why is this band not bigger? And uh, so I really felt like it was kind of a mission of mine to, 
yeah, we're going to lift this up. We're going to make this band bigger, you know, the mm -hmm. cannabis deserve, deserve that, you know, and, um, but after a while, and especially the last year, the last six months, I started to slowly realize that it doesn't really matter how much I put into this. It's, uh, I started to understand why the band never got bigger than they did, so to speak, because mm -hmm. it's not that kind of band, you know. They're, they don't necessarily feel that it's super important to, to go that extra mile to go to the next level or whatever, you know, which is fine. And that's what I want to say is that that's super cool. That's totally cool. But at first I was kind of, I was disappointed first because I had kind of high hopes for Canamass uh, and for my part as well of Canamass. So I, I was kind of disappointed when I started to realize that I was actually, I was putting too much energy into everything. I was trying to push things too much because the other guys were not really interested in pushing that much. And then I was disappointed because I did record that whole album and that whole album was released. It was mixed and everything, it was done. Uh, it was ready for release. And then we split and they erased all my vocals. And uh, that, that made me very disappointed uh, because I put so much, I put six months work into that album, all the demos and the whole album. And it sounded great, it was awesome. I still have the, I still have the mixes at home so I can make my own vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> you should, Matt. Yeah, I'd yeah, love to hear that. No, but it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, the album is great and, mm -hmm. and it's, I think now looking back, I think it, it made total sense that they brought uh, Joanne back, which was really cool because I mean, he had hardly not done anything since 86 when he did the first Cannabis album, which was really crazy because he's such a great singer. So, right. so, so that was like, so I think that was cool. And it sounds great, the stuff uh, when he redid the vocals and everything, it's awesome, it's, it's cool. But I was just disappointed because I put a lot of energy into Cannabis and I really had high hopes uh, to, to go to the next level with that band, you know. Uh, but we didn't. And now looking back at it, you know, actually, when I got contacted by Napalm regarding Skyblood, mm -hmm. that's when I started forgetting about Canamass because I was so focused with writing the, the Skyblood album and finishing that. So it was a really good way to just, okay, that's cool. Let's leave that behind. And uh, I always have, I you know, I had a great time with Canamass. We, we did so many great shows and I really, really enjoyed that band. It was awesome. But uh, we just, you know, it, uh, it, it wasn't for me in the end, you know, which is cool. You know? Yeah, I think now, like you said, you have a new opportunity with Skyblood to once again, take what is yours and take yeah. that what is yours to the next level. And uh, we just can't wait to hear more of you, Matt. It's been... Uh, what a good metal talk you've given us. We've covered oh. so much terrain. Oh, <laughs> we really appreciate it, man. No, no What's, uh, if, if you can leave us with a thought, we've, uh, we've experienced very, very strange times, Matt. We've, uh, we've seen musician careers, uh, uh, you know, either end because they don't find the means. We've yeah. seen fellow musicians unfortunately pass away such as yeah. the recent example of Alex Elijo from children of Bodom, which I'm oh, sure yeah. you heard of Fucking horrible. Yeah. Uh, we have other musicians going crazy and attacking the U S Capitol in the United States, like John Schaefer from my Earth. Uh, I met, yeah, I met John 10 years ago. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. I mean, all sorts of strange fucking things going on Mads if yeah. you can give a word of advice to uh, your fans and the people that listen to Metal Talk which are from all over the world and we appreciate that what would you share with them well I mean I don't know if I'm the right guy to give advice but I mean uh, <laughs> I mean times are crazy no doubt about it it's crazy times and it's, it's kind of interesting with the whole pandemic thing we all react so differently to this whole COVID thing. Some people got really 
frustrated very early on when COVID hit because they couldn't be social with people. And, you know, because, I mean, we human beings, we need to be social to each other. We need to hug each other. We need to have a good time, you know, and, and people react differently to that. And, right. uh, and even, I didn't really react that much in the beginning because I, I, I was telling people, hey, this is, this is what it's been like for me for 20 years, man. I'm sitting at home working, not, not seeing people. I don't make money. Then I make money six months later or whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm kind of used, I was kind of used to the situation, you know. But, but mm-hmm. even I, but I, I got to say myself as well, you know, that, yeah, it kind of wears you out. It's, it's kind of tough, yeah. even though you try to really, you try not to be uh, affected by the whole thing. But of course you do get affected. And it's like, I think every, human beings all over the world get affected by this. We get more pissed off at stuff sometimes that we wouldn't be pissed off because it's aggravating, it's frustrating. We just want this to disappear. We want to be able to go out again and lead our lives because life is short, right? And then, mm-hmm. and then yeah, it's crazy. Suddenly you feel like there's so many people passing away and dying and it's crazy so i don't have but on the other hand i can't i really really feel that from now on it's it's just going to get better you know we had the mm-hmm. we had the worst part behind us i mean that's the that's the most important to think about that okay in in my view we got to trust the vaccine we got to trust that it will help us all out uh, and uh, and of course the weather has been a disturbing factor when it gets colder actually the virus has yeah. been even worse so i mean mm-hmm. and i mean i don't know how it is in your where you where you're from but over here we start to get vaccine now and uh, hopefully hopefully in uh, maybe in may or something april may most of the population here in sweden will will have received the vaccine or whatever and when the summer comes when spring comes when the summer comes i think every all everyone would just like finally be able to go out again and meet people and uh, go yeah. to festivals and enjoy the summer and go on at least vacations in Sweden or whatever, just lead a normal life again. So I think we have the worst part behind us. I really, really hope so. That's right. The, the vaccine is out and it's being spread and it's being passed throughout everybody. I'm in the United States myself, Matt, and yeah, there's been a yeah. lot of conversations about protocols and and how we're going to move on and actually allow people to go to concerts and uh, actually uh, manage ourselves throughout the situation. But I think like you say, uh, we're past the worst part. I think we have to stay strong and stay uh, uh, united at a distance, correct? Yeah, And and just continue so that we can eventually see Sky Blood take on a stage (laughs) and uh, see it on tour all over the, the world, correct? Yeah, man. Or at least, uh, yeah. I mean, we. I actually spoke to the other guys in the Swedish band Prince Vart, and uh-huh. we, uh, we, uh, you know, we already tried to plan for going out of play again in March, April, uh, because I think they will start to go back and let people play for, you know, for fifty people. Correct. Once, once the weather gets better and we start to get the vaccine out of the country, because it's important for us as well to kind of pretend as things are a bit normal anyway that we actually can go out mm-hmm. and play and we don't care if we play for 20 people you know we just want to be on the stage and play and because uh, that's what we are all about you know so we are we are kind right. of optimi- we are kind of optimistic about this whole uh, that's why we've been working so hard on the album now we're going to get it out in april we're going to go out and promote it and we're going to play at least here in sweden and finland and norway to start with and uh, who knows, maybe in the future we'll record those songs in English as well, you know, and uh, yeah. re- release an English version of it as well, because it's really, uh, it doesn't sound Swedish, so to speak. It sounds pretty international, the style. So, yeah. so uh, I hope to maybe in the future be able to, to, to do that. So, so yeah, so, we, we, you know, we just need to get through those fucking winter months of January, February. And, start when march comes march april you know it slowly gets better i hope you know and so yep who, what part of the states uh, do you live in i live in texas which is the very very south uh very very south yeah. uh close yeah. to uh monterrey which was where i was yeah. born 
Yeah, you guys. Yeah. yeah, you definitely played there. Uh, I played Matt, Texas. I, what's that? Yeah, I played Texas with uh, Trans Siberian every year as well. With Trans Siberian, yeah. Uh, which uh, cities do you visit? Do you remember? El Paso. El Paso, wow. Um, we played in San Antonio, Houston. San Antonio, Houston, Dallas. Dallas, of course. Yep. And uh, I don't think we played Austin when I was there. But we, you know, Texas was definitely a number of shows, mm -hmm. really good shows. Hey, yeah. Matt, um, I want to thank you for an incredible metal talk and the great time uh -oh. that you've given us. Uh, thank you. We're going to continue following uh, your career. We really hope to catch you on the road uh, sometime very, very soon. And yeah. we just, again, thank you. Keep on rocking. And uh, thanks for joining Metal Talk. Ah, oh, man. Thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. Take care, man. Take care. Yeah. <laughs>